Thanks again for that introduction. I'm joined by Thomas Edsel, Columbia University professor and New York Times columnist, Christina Greer, assistant professor at Fordham University and the author of Black Ethnics, Democratic consultant Jeff Pollack, and Suri Kassir, a Democratic consultant and lobbyist. And we have been watching events unfold. Uh, no surprises here tonight. We have a new uh, mayor projected uh, in Bill de Blasio. And I guess the, the question we all need to wrestle with now is how does uh, a mayor-elect de Blasio put into place this platform that many people have called, uh, critics I should say, have called idealistic or maybe platitudes that can't be attained. We saw how Barack Obama was also swept in in a change election and he's had similar difficulties on a national level trying to do some of the things he wanted to do. So uh, maybe Professor we'll start with you. Is he going to be able to, to raise taxes on the rich? Is he going to be able to give every child a pre-K? Uh, in fact, he actually has a formal platform that is more aggressive than Obama, Obama's was in 2008. I mean, he really has spelled out a program for uh, child care, immigrants, uh, uh, early education. It's going to cost a lot of money, and I don't. I'm told that he's going to have a lot of difficulty getting the legislature to approve raising taxes on the wealthy, and if he can't do that. He's going to have to find ways to finance this, and I, I, that's going to start getting to be very messy. How much he's going to be obliged to live up to this platform, that I don't know. But he has certainly laid out what probably certainly is the most progressive platform in at least 20 years for an incumbent mayor, and probably more liberal in specifics than Dinkins had before him. Uh, I'm not sure. These guys will probably know better than I. Mm. Well, I think he might be able to do something that Obama wasn't necessarily successful in doing. It's taking the tone and the mood and the surge that got you there, but also constantly going public and keeping the voters informed of where you're trying and your successes and failures. Whereas Obama in many ways steamrolled. I mean, he had unified government. He wanted to get health care through. It was very expedient. But he didn't really go back to the voters and consistently keep them up to date. And I think if de Blasio can keep New Yorkers in the loop with his conversations and successes and failures in Albany with Andrew Cuomo. We know Andrew Cuomo will be looking out for Andrew Cuomo based on 2014 and possibly 2016. So if he can consistently say, well, I'm trying. I keep going to Albany to get this pre-K passed. It may not work. At least he insulates himself just a little bit when 2017 rolls around, which mm -hmm. will be here much sooner than we think. Jeff and Suri, how important is um, um, de Blasio's relationship with Andrew Cuomo and Albany going to be in getting these things done? Well, governors in the governor of New York and the mayor of New York, all, there's a fundamental tension that is always there with the power in Albany and, of course, the power in the city and the biggest city in the state. Uh, and so it's inevitable that there's some that there's some tension. But here you've got two guys who know each other very, very well. Um, and I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic. Do they like about, each other? Yeah, there's no question there. There's no question there is an affection with both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and I think that there, I think that we have to give them time to figure out what's going to happen. I think the other thing to remember is, look, I don't know whether Bill de Blasio can get his income tax passed next year. Maybe it's a year from now. But he also is going to have an incredibly progressive city council behind him. And so there's going to be a unity in this city behind a progressive vision that is very different than we've had for the last 12 years, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Bill de Blasio is very unique in that he really has a deep understanding of government and a tremendous extent, extensive experience in politics. And he really understands the interplay between politics and government. And I, I'm very optimistic that he's a strategist. He's very, very smart. He's all about getting things done and accomplishing things. And I think he's going to figure out a way to focus, very, very laser-like focus on the things that he talked about and getting stuff done and really within the first hundred days I think I predict you're going to see lots of focus on the campaign that he laid out and getting things done. Now one of the first orders of business for him is going to be the municipal contracts which are still up in the air. Speaking of getting things done, how is he going to do that? Um, you know he has had a closer relationship with the labor unions than his uh, than Mike Bloomberg. What do you what do you think his best I think, strategy I think he's will be? going to be tough. I think there's lots of things that he wants to get accomplished, and he knows just the retroactive pay alone of the municipal contracts 
we're talking about in the area of five billion dollars right. so this is very very significant It is the first order of business you're hundred percent right and it's going to be very tough negotiations I think he's a friend of the unions and the unions understand that um, and they know that they're dealing with a friend but at the end of the day they know that there's lots of things that need to get accomplished and the budget needs to be resolved they're, very al they're also dealing with a friend who expected them who expected them to be on board with him and who ran the campaign the most progressive campaign that spoke to them and they weren't on board with except it except for 1199 uh, and that's the only one he I'm really owes about, but I'm talking about the municipal unions no right. question 1199 right. deserves huge credit but in terms of the municipal unions You're right. that we're talking about here they were not on board with the Blasio and so uh, obviously he is a friend of the unions and 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 has been and the progressive vision is going to be there but he's not Holding to them. Uh, that's, the, that's the great part about this victory um, for de Blasio. He really isn't beholden to anyone uh, to some extent other than his own progressive vision that I think um, he will be rel religious and fastidious about. And don't is forget. He really, wait, is he really not beholden to anyone? I mean, that's what I, everyone I, would no. say about Mike Bloomberg, who was so independently wealthy, who but didn't who did, rely on anybody's who money. Who who, 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 in who, terms who of the special interest, who is who is there who is for de Blasio? The guy was in fourth place for most of the year. Right. Every, well, we, we, after it, the primary. They, well, yeah, but they, between the, the primary and, and today is, is not relevant because, as we said before, there was no real election. I'm sorry, Joe Loden. There was no general election, right? right. It was done. On the primary, so up to the primary, this is the guy who was in fourth place, who everyone was was discounting, and they were running a consistent and and well executed campaign. I think Jeff talked about something really interesting, which is there's 21 new council members coming in, four out of five new borough presidents, a new public advocate, there'll be a new speaker of the city council, um, a new controller. I think you're going to see a really new vision for the city, and I think it'll be very very unified in its approach. Everybody's talking about affordable housing. Everyone's talking about income equality. Uh, everybody's focused on this, the, the, this stop and frisk issue. Um, you're going to see really a unification of lots of interest. You have a progressive caucus in the city council that now has close to 17 members that are part of it. You'll see a very much a unified vision. I wish I were that optimistic. I think we might see it starts off as the get along gang immediately, but we are broke and we have some serious financial hurdles ahead of us. And so I think when the devil gets in the details, I do think that we'll see some factions and possibly some fractions approaching all of these different groups that have been laid out. And I don't know how patient the voters will be with this new vision. I mean, it has been 12 years since we've had a politician run the city, which is just going to be a totally different feel. Um, and we know that Mayor Bloomberg's been able to do certain things with his personal money to right. offset some of the deficits on the city. So I am I'm cautiously optimistic in the sense that I think because the tone and the mood are in the right vein, then New Yorkers are willing to move forward. But I don't know how long that'll last. And